Hey photographers, three of Photoshop's most powerful tools are curves, layers, and masks. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to bring those together to take this photo from here to here to here as a finished file. Hey photographers, Rich Ceiling here with another one of my example videos, and this video is going to span a couple parts. We're going to look at the power of Photoshop here to use multiple layers to do multiple changes and have those all be things we can go back and edit or change with great precision at any date. And this really brings together the highlights of Photoshop, the most powerful features of Photoshop here. And one of the reasons it continues to be my tool of choice. So let's start with our photograph here. This is the bottom of a Saturn V rocket at the Kennedy Space Center. And this is actually a stitch of four pictures that I took. I wanted to get something really high resolution here so I could make a really big print of this. So you can see it stitched this together and it was with a wide angle lens. So it did a little bit of its stuff with that and brought me to this where I've got all five engines, the, the kind of iconic, arrangement here of the Saturn V engines. And as so often happens, the color really isn't interesting here to me. It's uh, There's other stories that I want to tell. In fact, this blue paint of the structure that it's housed in kind of gets in the way. They really should have consulted with me on the paint for that to make it more photogenic, but they didn't. So I'm going to have to take some control here in Photoshop and turn this to black and white. And first step, channel mixer. So come over here with my favorite channel mixer. I'm going to turn this on. And for this, I came up with a combination of 80% red, 20% blue. That just gave me more of the look that I wanted here after playing around with it and trying to find the right settings. I like that better than just the pure red channel. So that's what I went with. The most important part for me of getting any image right is the contrast. So immediately I've gone to curves and produced a curve here on curve layer one. And again, I'm trying to look for the best overall contrast. And that happens locally and globally. It's not just the difference between these light parts and the darkest parts. That's part of it. But I'm also looking for how it brings out the texture in other areas of the photograph. And I do this by, you know, this is visual. Uh, the shape isn't, I'm not trying to make a shape here. I'm not trying to make a certain shape here. I'm trying to make these areas look and feel a certain way to communicate what I want with tones. You know, photography has its own kind of visual music and our notes are in black and white shades of gray and color. They're different patches of color that are all working together to create a performance and a feel of texture and roundness, fluidity, volume, dimensionality. So I'm moving that around, trying to create what I want doing that visually and I'm lifting a lot of the highlights. I'm taking this, let's turn it off and look at this bottom part of the stage, this white insulation. It started off at about 210. It's a highlight value, but it's still going to be a gray. And to give this photograph a really full range of tonality, I need to bring that up closer to white. And that's what I'm doing with this point. I've brought this up and now looking in here, we're reading 240, 242, 244. These are going to print as a very high value of white right up against the edge of discernibility with any texture, because I don't want them to be blank and featureless white. Large areas of white like this need texture in a print or else they look blank on screen. If you're just going to show this at screen resolution on a phone or even on a computer monitor, you could get away with this being pure white and no texture because the, your monitor cannot reveal that fine detail. It doesn't have enough resolution, but get this on a nice printer that has high resolution. You can see that detail and that blank area is just going to look dead. But if you fill it with texture and detail, it starts to look wonderful. So we're trying to get this to that higher value. That's what this pushing up has achieved. We've lifted the highlights. We've done it with our shoulder curve that protects our highlights and creates a, a wonderful contrast in there, keeps things from going to pure white. And we've also then added a little bit of contrast in the lower part. We've darkened things past the middle tone. We've lifted the first half of the tones from about middle gray on up, from middle gray on down. 
we've started to darken them in the shadows. So there's curve one. It does have a mask on it too. You can see from here, at some point in the process, I saw that this got the engines too dark. So I mask that out. And let's just see what the effect of that is so you can see it. You can see if I hadn't masked those down, those areas get a lot darker. And in the final print, I don't want them that dark. So masking them out, let me keep them light and bring in the right tonality, the right dimensionality from them. Curves one looks great for the image overall, but as I was making this, it was really clear the inside of these engine bells, they don't have the texture. They don't have the tonality that I want. So it needs another curve. They're, they're not where I want them. And that's where curve two comes in. Curve two, you can see this is masked right from the beginning. This started as a mask. And you can see that I've made these a couple different ways and some are painted in slightly. This one selected in and feathered. These were brushed in. This was a few more areas gone in. And you can see that you can let masks be rough at times. When I'm working on an image for the first time, I'm not afraid to let these masks be rough. I can go in once I've approved it and finalize the mask. I've spent way too much in 20 years as a printmaker making perfect masks. It's only when the image has been approved that it's worth doing that. In this stage, we're in rough draft mode. Rough in the mask, get it close enough. If you like it, make the print. Don't waste your time making perfect masks for something that you may never use. Fix that in later. So I've come in here and I've masked just those five engine bells. And let's look at the curve here. So we've made a lightning curve and it's a, a two point lightning curve, actually three moves on here. I've lifted the highlights. That's what you see most of this brightening coming from. I've literally lifted everything in the image down to this last little bit of the image, everything uh, from 24 points on the 255 scale all the way up to the highlights have been lifted. And we've got another point here in making that move we just lost a little bit of contrast in here. So I've tucked in the toe. I've moved my black point over seven points. And you can see that just brings in a little bit more black to this. And I should tell you too, this file, this is actually my second version of this. I made an initial version. I made a print proof. I looked at the proof and based on that, I came back and made some fine tuning changes. So this is tuned for print and what looks best on a very high resolution inkjet printer on very high quality paper. These changes are tuned in based on that print feedback. Black and white monitors aren't perfect and they can hide that feel a bit. So proofs become a really important part of the black and white print making process if you're looking to make prints as your final product. So these changes can't remember, but some of them came in based on that print change. So I've moved that point over, but in doing that, it moved this part of the curve over and made things a little darker. So this point came in to protect this effect and not let this move change this curve entirely. It keeps the curve more like this would be without it. So that's what we have that second point in there for. So let's go back out here and just look at that. And you can see, look at the big change that's made already. And we'll get rid of the marching ants there that happened when we deleted the mask. So big change, much different look and feel instead of these dark holes that we're looking into. Now there are these areas of very interesting texture and detail. So I made this move. And that's about as big a move as I could make on that. But looking at this, I saw I wanted to make these engines even brighter. These in particular, these three are still dark compared to this. Look at the nice, interesting tonality I have in there. And these are very different from that. I wanted to bring these up closer to that engine. So I've masked those three. And let's just look at that mask again. You can see I've borrowed from my previous masks 
And that's a powerful part of uh, masking. You don't have to keep remaking the same mask. If you've masked one area once, you can just borrow that mask again. And I've lifted those up again, just grabbing in the middle. That's opened those up. And in the process, it has brought a lot of feeling of contrast into that. So instead of being very dark there, it's brought a lot of my highlights up. It's brought much more interesting texture into that engine. So let's go back out and now look at curves four. So that worked for these three, but it wasn't the right curve for this engine up here. You can see he's kind of left out there looking a little bit dead still. So let's go up to him and I've got a mask that we've just lightened him up to try to bring it in balance. So these all feel kind of similar. Watch here. I'm going to go back and forth between curves three and curves four. You can see different amounts of curves for each of those. So I chose to just make this on its own curve so that I could control it individually very easily. And it's just a, a little less of the curve effect because uh, this curve effect was right for these three, wasn't right for this one. It just gets its own layer. No problem. We can put on lots of layers. So curves four does that. Now let's look at curves five. Curves five, what do you think's going on there? It's a darkening layer. So looking at this, you know, gosh, I would love to have photographed this in its native environment in the vertical assembly building or out on the launch pad back during the Apollo program, but I'm a little late to the party for that given my age. So I've got to photograph it here, but this building that it's in is not the most interesting part of the photograph. And I really, I don't care about the building. I want you looking at these engines and this graphical representation that is created by this shape. So I've gone in and made a mask where I'm selecting everything but the engines and the rocket stage. And I'm darkening this down so that your eye starts moving in to the center. Here, when this is lighter, your eye starts just kind of wandering off up into all this light stuff. By darkening it down, it's kind of like a vignette, but it's not. Don't, don't think everything needs a vignette. This isn't about making it a vignette and blocking out stuff. I've tried to keep this as natural as possible so that you don't realize that I've darkened this, that it's hidden to the viewer. I don't, I don't like when you can see that there's a vignette done. It's a magic trick. I don't want you to realize I've drawn your eye in. I just want to draw your eye in. So I've darkened that area down. And again, just my standard, when I'm lightening or darkening things, I usually just grab in the middle and push it up to lighten, pull it down to darken. And the mask lets us do that in just a specific area. And you saw it's a little bit, not doing it much in there because that is already the right value. See what I've done is I'm taking this and trying to match the density of what I have there so that all this feels cohesive looking around it. So there's curve five. Now curve six, we looked at before we blocked out on that very first curve, our engines. We'll look at curve six. We've kind of got the inverse of that mask. So copied the mask, inverted the mask so that I could work on just this area and this is looking, when I look at it right now, it just looks very dead and flat. It looks like, oh gosh, it looks like a journalism triax back in the, the 80s. So that's not the look I'm looking for in a fine art print here. I'm looking for a really nice, rich contrast. So I've given this area its very own contrast curve. And it's a pretty radical curve. Look at this. I've really moved this point over because these started off there's not a white point in here. This looks very bright, but look at even the silver metallic is like 204. I've been able to move this over and through the process, I'm still really, you know, that's gone to pure white, specular white, but I've been able to pull over a lot of contrast and build that in. And I'm okay with this small area going to 255 white. It, it adds to that silver feel. And in the case of everything else, it wasn't worth masking that down. It's really this curve gives all these others the right shape on print again. On screen, it's going to look a little different than on print, but I just want to really bring that contrast and 
have the viewer feel this mechanicalness, all this plumbing that feeds these powerful engines. So you can see that really brings out a lot of change there. And this change isn't just to this mechanical part, but the underneath of these engine bells as well. It's just, look at this, it's just kind of dead and sleepy in there. So that contrast and here in the fairing as well, just really brings that alive and brings it out. So there we go. Let's look at this complete before and after. And there's our curves before and after. So before, look at that. I've almost flipped around the lighting where these engine bells are the dark part and the lightest parts are our lights here and this and our eyes drawn around. I've completely flipped around your experience that now you're looking into these engine bells that are almost like glowing with light and you're focusing on that part of the photograph and that made a final print that expressed what I wanted to say. The big takeaway here again is looking at how we are able to use multiple layers, each one its own individual adjustment with a very precise curve for each one of these areas, a mask that let us control each of those areas individually. And all these are editable. I can go back at any time. I can change the curve. I can make things lighter and darker. I could go in on the masks and let's get our paintbrush tool here. Uh, we need a little bit bigger paintbrush than that. And I can change the effect on the mask and I can save multiple versions of this. So if I make a version, print it, don't like it, I can come in, make some small changes, save it as a new version and build up my expression over time. With fine art, getting it exactly the way you want the first time is not a reasonable expectation. Proofing is part of the process. So I can go back and do that and have all this multi-layered control. Here we're doing it just with curves, but I could do this with color balance. I can do this with heat saturation. I can do this with any of the adjustment layers that are offered to me by Photoshop. And that control, that fluidity, that ability to just come in here and quickly make a little bit of a change with great control or undo it, redo it, save it back in. That's what keeps me coming back to Photoshop and uh, makes it such an effective tool. So combined thing there shows you really a lot of pieces of Photoshop coming together and how powerful they can be when you use them in concert with one another. Looking forward to seeing what happens when you start taking greater control of your photographs with this. Thanks for watching this one with me and looking forward to sharing another video with you soon.